Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is uh, Amina, as it is in my title, not title, but the channel's name. Uh, I'm a foreigner. Yeah, it's been five years that I am saying I'm a foreigner, I'm a foreigner. It's just a weird label to put on oneself for such a long time. But today's topic is about getting married in Poland and my story, how I got married, the challenges that I got. Um, as I told you that I really don't have, uh, yeah, I have the time, but this is not my uh, big, big, big priority, like to edit videos. Um, so that's why I'm not able to do such a video like uh, how to get uh, married step by step and uh, like make it more structured. So I prefer more of a story time, storytelling videos that I don't need to cut at all. I just remove the memory card from this camera, put it on uh, my laptop and upload that to YouTube. So without further ado, um, uh, this is not a story how I met my husband. <laughs> so, uh, when we wanted to get married, mind you that I am Algerian, so Algeria has, um, maybe I'm wrong with the wording, but in the uh, Dastur, in the uh, institution, it is based on Islam. Um, I know that Algeria is not like Iran or Saudi Arabia, but it's still based on Islam. So a woman cannot get married without the approval of uh, her father. If there is no father, it would be her uncle. If there is no uncle or, or no uncle, there is a brother. If there is no brother, if there is a male cousin. So remember, it's only a male who can approve this marriage from your family. And second of all, the husband must be Muslim. Even if you do not identify as a Muslim, the husband needs to be Muslim. Uh, this question I asked even the ambassador in Germany because we were looking for ways to get married and it's just, it seems just impossible. But trust me, it is possible. Uh, I told him, I'm not Muslim, like I was not born Muslim, I'm Christian. Uh, I'm not Christian, but I just said so. I told him like I was born and my family is Christian and we are not Muslim. And he said like, why do you need to complicate things? Just say you are Muslim, make your husband Muslim and that's it. Like, that's it. Like, and then go on with your life, live your life. Like, just pretend. <laughs> and that's what we did. Um, so the process was so vague because there aren't many cases um, on the internet where you can uh, rely on, where you can ask questions, but fortunately there are some portals uh, which I will share maybe later if I don't forget. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we didn't want to have the marriage in Algeria uh, because one, there was COVID, and two, I just wanted to be in Poland. I didn't want to have any wedding in Algeria, um, especially after having the fiancé, the engagement party there. I really didn't want to do any other party there in Algeria. Uh, it was not just something that I liked, that party. It was just not my thing. Anyway, uh, I went to the embassy to get uh, the document that I am single. But the embassy was so useless, they don't even issue such a document. So I needed to spend a lot of money to book a ticket to back to Algeria. And it was almost a thousand zloty um, to just stay there for a week and get the certificate that I am single and ready to mingle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so going there, uh, I needed to have two male witness that I am single. Like, as if there is no archive or a system where you are written that you got married when or you were never married. Like, there are systems. So, if I was married there in Algeria, like, I can bring any two male pe person, like, 
in the street i pay them decent amount of money yeah and i tell them just witness that i am uh, single and they would do it and you get that certificate that's super weird uh good um i was not married <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I got my dad and his his friend. They came with me to the municipality, and they had their IDs and they signed. And yeah, I got that certificate. It was just like that. Uh, I even didn't need to pay anything. It was for free. Uh, my husband, he just applied in the, his municipality here in uh, Poland. He didn't need to have any witness. He paid for that certificate, I believe. I'm not sure, uh, because in Poland, every document has a value and you need to pay for that. <laughs> and that service that they printed that document for you. Um, yeah, uh, so when we came back, we were so happy. We were thinking like, damn, that's what we needed. But this embassy, like they were the roadblocks at every step of the way. Uh, they knew that I was getting married. I asked them for the procedure. They just told me, just get a certificate that you are single, both of, the, uh, both of you and your husband, and that he must be Muslim, and that's it. Okay, we did all of that. We went to the embassy and they told me, okay, what is your father? <laughs> It's COVID time, baby, and um, yeah, like even if it was not COVID, my dad just wouldn't travel all the way. I don't know how he needs to change and he's old. It's just not something he can do. He's sick. Um, so the lady at the embassy, she just told me, I was giving them, I was giving them propositions maybe we, they can meet via skype maybe uh, online um nothing they didn't agree she just told me don't get married then like just it's not time to get married wait another two years or until the covid ends and then bring your dad but i cannot bring my dad like what what the hell and my my brothers i don't have much contact with them the elder ones and the the youngest brother he's just 12 um yeah so it's it was just weird and stupid and they, we were getting very frustrated um so they didn't give us another alternative uh, we didn't know uh what to do just to wait um m maybe someone would think of oh, wow, so it's not a big deal uh, sorry <laughs> this means <laughs> Uh, it's not a big deal, just don't get married and wait like three years or whatever. One, I cannot wait because even though I would wait after the COVID, my dad wouldn't come to Poland. I don't have uh, uh, elder siblings who are already in, in Europe and getting a visa for anyone in my family, a male, especially male, like I think like they get more refusals, rejections than um, females uh, because of um, immigration like the illegal immigration and etc uh, it's just a hard thing so I need to ask for a favor from a male from in my family pay him pay his like uh, the the flights and etc it's just a big expense and wait for the visa which he might not get um, the embassy didn't tell us anything what to do just to not to get married all right we somehow found out that i don't remember what was the source my husband was also investigating and we thought the court would be the solution uh we didn't get a lawyer we did everything by ourselves especially my husband kudos to my husband he he's he should be a lawyer I, I, every time I'm telling him, like, you should be a lawyer, like, you need to go and study law because you would be a really great lawyer. He really loves, like, investigating, trying to get, gather documents and uh, uh, the articles. Yeah, he's really great at that. Uh, so he was doing all this uh, investigation. He wrote the letter to the court 
and we wanted a hearing, a hearing, I guess, like a meeting with the judge. Um, I have the document in, yeah, in the kitchen. Uh, so we wrote a letter with my name and uh, his name of my husband stating our story that uh, we want to get married, these are the roadblocks, but we have every right to get married and the embassy just cannot give us that uh, approval. Yeah, I forgot that, so, like, why did we need the embassy? Why we couldn't just go to the civil municipality and get married? Uh, because as I am a foreigner, I need to have a certificate that allows me, that there is nothing that prevents me from getting married abroad. Uh, and which the embassy should issue without well, an issue <laughs> but uh, no they didn't want so um, we told them that the embassy did not approve because of my parents and my parents just cannot come here it's COVID time uh, and we stated there uh, every document that we have included you can include any document you want you want to prove that you are a part partners and you've been long time together include pictures of your um, adventures together or traveling or whatever uh, you want to prove that you are paying the rent together include that whatever you want included in that document but the main things are that you have you are both single uh, and the certificate that the the husband is Muslim uh, is we found out that it was not that necessary. We were not asked at all about our religion at the court, so we figured that it was not necessary to have. But later you would need it. Uh, I'm talking about a foreigner female because if you are a foreigner male Muslim, you don't need to have your wife to be Muslim. Yeah, and you don't need to have your father or mother to come and be uh, allow you to get married. So if you were a male, everything would be super easy. But I'm a female, yeah, female born in a Muslim country. Um, yeah, uh, back to the documents that we needed to add. Uh, a proof of payment because you need to pay uh, a fee to have a hearing with the judge. Uh, whereas, yeah, the birth certificate, my birth certificate was translated. Um, it's hard to find a good translator because a good translator meaner, meaning that good price and would not make mistakes of your name and etc. Uh, which I have found uh, recently a good translator. Uh, I might add his contact in the uh, description box. Um, I'm not sponsored or <laughs> I'm not paid to say uh, to to refer him at all so um, yeah we sent the letter and we got a hearing after six months <laughs> oh my god that was long time and mind you that was in a small town this was not in Warsaw if it was in Warsaw I don't know I think we would wait a year uh, this was in a very small town, um, I don't know, 50,000 inhabitants, maybe, even less. Um, yeah, so six months of waiting, uh, we were not even sure what to do in those six months. Uh, do we need to prepare for our wedding, like prepare the, you know, like you need to buy some, like a dress, uh, prepare the venue, check the the invite list, I don't know, it's just we were not even sure that would happen this year. Um, yeah, anyway, so after six months of waiting, we went to this court and the court before that asked me if I have my own translator. Uh, if you, you cannot, you your husband, just your partner or husband, cannot be the one translating to you because they want to make sure that you are not being told false things, that uh, he's not dragging you to get married to him and without knowing, like he can be like just translating to you other stuff. Who knows? Um, so they 
the court appointed for me a translator and the court paid him yeah that was like that because i i didn't want I wanted to have a translator but was not Arabic, I wanted French or English. But the court insisted that he would be Arabic because the first language in Algeria is Arabic. But for me, I don't understand much Arabic, like the Arabic of um, the Middle East Arabic. If the translator was Algerian, I would understand him or Moroccan or Tunisian. But yeah, like I just didn't want to have any translator. Uh, they didn't accept Alge uh, English or French maybe French they would have accepted anyway but it costs a lot for one hour and you just don't know how long that uh, hearing would be I'm saying a hearing maybe it ha it is another word for this meeting with the judge um, yeah so uh, on the day of the court it's nice to wear nice dress uh, elegant um, to show that you are serious about this uh, yeah uh, the translator that I got was from the Middle East it was from Yemen and I swear when he was talking to him he was translating to me I was just asking him to repeat over and over and I told him like just try to have uh, academic Arabic it would be better than the Middle Eastern Arabic just a bit better um, and even my husband, who he was the one translating to me from time to time. <laughs> so what happened in that uh, court? I was asked um, questions like my name, uh, since when did I come here? Why did I come here to Poland? How did I my meet my now husband? Uh, she asked him the same thing and compared the stories. Uh, she first started with him and then with me. Um, then uh, she asked me about my plans, my future plans and our plans together in the future. Uh, she asked, she because uh, the judge was a woman, uh, where else she asked why the embassy cannot issue us this document. So she asked my husband and me, for, uh, first him and then me, uh, to just check uh, the this um, check. Then, yeah, I didn't write uh, all the questions that we had, like, and when you are addressed, you need to stand up, yeah? Um, and there's a woman next to the judge who's uh, typing everything that we are saying. Uh, yeah, it was more stress than nothing, uh, anything serious to be stressed for. Like, really, like, if you are going to this court for uh, your wed to get married, I advise you not to stress. Um, they are happy to get you married. They just want to check uh, if uh, the relationship is uh, standing on real basis, <laughs> not on uh, just uh, paying someone uh, to give you documents. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so after that, uh, we stayed in that court we were uh, writing another letter uh, to thank them and to ask when we can get the uh, this certificate um yeah by the way the judge accepted um a certificate meaning uh maybe it's not a document a document from the court states states that this couple can get married uh, when I checked the, the, my do because they send you all the documents, you can see like all your files. When we checked that, I found that they have gotten the um, codex, uh, family code, family uh, law, family law of Algeria. I, I swear, like I've never thought to check it before. Uh, so then I I got this family code. Uh, and it was also translated to Polish and I was reading and it was interesting like all these laws about women like <laughs> like about all these limitations that they have given women uh, in Algeria like I, I know that it is the same in Morocco uh, so yeah it was just crazy to read all of that and at the end uh, there was a section like I think it was at the end of this family code that in certain circumstances like it was really the last law I think 
in only in rare situations, circumstances that a woman can get married without presence of her um, of her um, wakil, tutor, um, just in charge, <laughs> anyway, uh, dad or uncle or whatever. Um, so I was thinking like that could be for a widower, an old lady who is in her 60s without children and no family and she wants to get married and uh, maybe they would accept. Um, and other cases, maybe our case that we couldn't, but we got it from the court, maybe. So maybe that helped us a bit in that family court. I'm not sure on what they based their judgment, but I think it helped a bit. Anyway, uh, after that we didn't just directly go and celebrate it. No, we need to wait another month to, <laughs> gosh, to get that document sent to us because you just don't get that document on that day. You need to wait. We waited another month. So within that month it gave us some time to prepared a little bit. I bought a dress, he bought a costume, costume, a suit, sorry, um, because in French it's a costume. Um, yeah, um, and and we went to the municipality, right? Uh, but then it didn't stop there. Yeah, of course. At the municipality there was a woman who was just a pain in the in the crack. <laughs> she just didn't accept that document that the court gave us. She just said, no, but the embassy needs to approve that. Oh my God. So uh, she was just not ready, willing to work with us. She was just really, I don't know. I don't know what to say about her. And also other, other things that we needed from the municipality, she was also just a pain. Real pain. Anyway, we needed to go to the to the embassy, uh, telling them, asking them for help to call this municipality, um, and just explain them that uh, they can do nothing. They cannot give me the document because my father is not present or anything like that. Um, the embassy refused. They said no. Um, we do not get requests from you. Like. We do not get orders from you. You don't tell us what we need to do. Okay, so we had the the agent, the municipality agent, the officer, I think we can call her like that, the officer, to call the embassy. And then at that moment, and they picked up the phone while we are there. And uh, yeah, the counselor uh, answered that the judgment from the court has um, power over w the what the embassy decides, right? So court is here and the embassy is here. So what the court says is above what the embassy says. Yeah, and uh, that uh, allowed us to get married. <laughs> Did we get married by her, that woman? No, uh, we wanted another person. Uh, I Fortunately, I got another um, a great man who did our wedding, meaning that he got us married on that day. Um, what else? What else? What else? About uh, getting this Islam certificate. This Muslim certificate, you can get it if you are in Poland. Uh, there is one mosque and one, one mosque in Warsaw, uh, but I think it's not in the mosque, but it is in Islamic center. I think it, they are in the same building, but just it's a different department. Uh, they would ask you the regular questions. How did you know? How how did you get to know Islam? Why do you need this certificate? Since when are you Muslim? What do you know about Islam? Uh, and they can they can invite you to pray with them. Uh, and you need to go in person there to pick up that certificate. Um, yeah, this is the process for getting the Islam certificate. Uh, and it is written in Arabic and in Polish under it so we don't need to translate it at all uh yeah 
When we got married, we celebrated, we had a party, everything went well. We just had 20 people at that wedding, 25, 20. Um, so basically after that we needed to legalize our wedding in Algeria. So that when I go to Algeria with my husband, he is regarded as my husband as well. We can have a hotel room together with no issues or police involved. And <laughs> Oh my god. And yeah, uh, we needed that Islam certificate, we needed that certificate of uh, marriage from Poland. Um, and it was done within few weeks. It was quite fast. Adam, my husband, got uh, this Livre de Famille. It's a little book for a uh, family book uh, where I am as his first wife. And I didn't get this family book. I thought I would get one, but it's only for the husband at first. And then if I want to have one, I need to request it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it had also other pages for our children, if we would have one. And they would, they need to be registered there by the embassy. And also about other wives. So basically, if he goes to Algeria, he can get married uh, over and over. He can, but... We're not interested in that polygamy. Um, yeah, um, another roadblock that we got uh, when signing this marriage certificate, signing marriage contract, whatever you can call it, I signed that I want to change my name to his surname. Sorry, my not my name, my surname. Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to change my name. Uh, I mean, I wanted to take his surname, uh, but the thing is that when I wanted to have that surname on my passport, it was not approved by the embassy uh, because basically in Algeria, the woman just cannot take the name of her husband. Somehow she can borrow it, but she cannot have, like she can use it, but she cannot have it in her documents. And I swear, I, I, I didn't know about that. Like my mom, when she writes her name in any documents or she signs, she signs with the, with the surname of my dad. And then when I asked her like to show me her passport, for the first time I checked her passport and she showed me and it was her maiden name. I, that was quite weird. I didn't know about that. So it made really things complicated, a lot complicated um, when... Um, when you want to buy a house, when you do some administrative things, you cannot use the new surname that you have chosen. You need to keep on choosing, uh, writing the old surname. And sometimes they're gonna ask you, but we see you here in our database as, uh, as Zalewska, right? Uh, but I am not in my documents like my residence card. The residence card, they do not change the surname unless your passport is changed. So it's just a loop like that. No opening. <laughs> just like that. Um, yeah. Uh, this question about the surname, when I can change it, like fully change it to be reflected on my documents. It could be when I get my Polish citizenship, which will be after maybe 30 years. Now I am already five years in Poland, um, so I really don't know. I cannot really comment on that. One girl told me from Facebook, told me that she was able to change it during that um, process of getting citizenship. But I can comment on that when, uh, when I get it. So I really hope that my story, my, yeah, my story basically uh, was helpful for you if you are thinking of getting married. Um, it is a bit tiresome and it can affect um, you emotionally and just, you're just gonna feel like thinking like is it even worth it to get married but if you want to get married it is worth it just fight just fight for it um, yeah and uh, yeah I wish you all the best if you getting married here in Poland please invite me <laughs> 
<laughs> I would be happy to attend your wedding. I really like uh, parties, uh, especially Polish ones. Yeah, I uh, like eating and uh, I make a great guest. Yes. So uh, have a great day and uh, 